think the all of was an intern there. I mean, no, he was an intern, but he was an athlete there. Nick Murray really was on his powerlifting team, and then John came up last semester. I'm sure a lot of you came out for that. So I really respect John. I think he's a great coach. I really don't know that many people that are better than him at teaching people and motivating people and encouraging people. So I'm going to give it up to him. Oh, by the way, he's got a powerlifting team where we is that official? Yeah. is going to be there. What's the date? I'll be competing May 18th. Uh, and then we have the Westside Pro Qualifier. So Louis Simmons will be there in Gate Pop. And we'll get my man Super What's that for? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if any, if anyone's really interested in power, go check that out. And I'm just going to like to say, if you want to see me lift some iron, you know, yeah. that's what's going on. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Is everyone excited to be here today? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I just want to thank Justin and, and everybody. Uh, just before I start, I just want to say uh, it's just really awesome to be a part of this, this seminar, this symposium, and uh, and it's just really cool to come here and to see the culture grow. Uh, last time, even just seeing some of you guys, I had a chance to coach some of you guys uh, last night and today. And just seeing your form improve and, and having good PRs from after seeing you guys for a couple of months before. It's, that's why I do what I do. It's just really inspiring stuff, seeing the progress, seeing the progress of the strength conditioning community here. So uh, I want you guys to give yourselves a hand because you're doing a fantastic job here. Awesome job, guys. So. I know a lot of you guys, uh, how many people have seen you speak before when they here last time? So a couple of people know. For those of you who don't know me, um, you know, I just want to like be clear, and I was talking with Tony about this, that this was not my plan A. Uh, a lot of people told me that you can't be a personal trainer, you can't be a coach, it's not a career, you're stupid, you need a stable job, you're not going to have stable income, yada, yada, yada. And I, and I listened. I listened to those people. Uh, my degree is actually in teaching. Um, but luckily, that didn't work out. So I went to, to plan B. And now I'm here. So I'm just going to rewind to elementary school a little bit. There's me. In the competition, I, uh, I had a goal. I wanted to pull 600 pounds in competition. I actually ended up pulling 640. I felt good. I was really happy with that. Um, so what I want you guys to do right now while I'm talking, I want you to write down kind of where you're at. So, like, if you're a student at Corwin, you know, like 20 is like, I want to get an impressive performance, whatever. I want you to write down where you're at right now, and then I want you to write down, like, for the students, especially, like, what your dream job would be, or like, where you want to be, maybe, like, three years, five years, whatever it is. Like, what's your ultimate goal? Okay? I want you to write down, so. And uh, while you're writing down, so I'm just going to use uh, my girl, Carrie, here as an example. So, you got a meet coming up. Right, so what's uh, the goal? Let's well, use we'll we'll one left for example. Like, what do you want to squat? What's your goal for the What's your goal for the squat? Uh, Two forty-five. Two forty-five. Okay. When are you gonna What When are you gonna do it for? Uh, so April twenty-sixth, right? So you want to squat how much? Two forty-five. Two forty-five at right. at. Uh, one, so you're gonna add whatever, 123 you're gonna go? So at a 123 rate class, and April 26, why do you want to do it? I don't know, Yeah, well, are you passionate about it? Do you want to squat more? Yeah. What, is it, what it mean to you if you achieve your goal? Okay, but you're, you care about it, so you gotta work on the reason a little bit, so. We'll use that as an example, so. Your goals need to be, that's good, that was excellent. Your goals need to be smart. Your goal, a, 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 a weight loss goal, okay, I want to lose weight, that's a really crappy goal. I want to make more money. It's not quantifiable. So weightlifting is really easy because you can measure the weight on the bar. So your goals need to be specific, measurable, attainable. You need a reason for the goal. And they need to have a time frame. So this particular goal, uh, I forget the date, but I think it was November, I'm just gonna say November 20th, I don't remember exactly. I wanted to pull 605 pounds in, uh, at, on uh, November 23rd, and uh, my previous PR, PR was like 575, so it was attainable, it wasn't like a stretch, it wasn't like I wanna pull 1,000 or anything like that. 
It was close, it was reasonable, I had a time frame, I had a deadline. And why do I want to do that? Because, like we were talking about with Tony before, as a coach, as someone who gets people strong and is passionate about strength, I need to constantly be getting myself stronger as well. And that's why I still compete. That's one that I still love competing, but I need to be a role model and lead the way for my athletes. Because if I'm not doing that to myself, how can I expect them to do it? So that's my reason. I want to be a leader for my team. I may not be the best, but I'm going to do everything right. I'm going to do the right thing. So that's my reason. So a lot of people forget. You need to have a reason for the goal. Just like, I want to own a Porsche. I want to have a nice house. Like, if those are all meaningless if, you don't, if there's no reason behind it. Okay? That's super important. So when you guys write your goals down, you need to have a deadline. You need to have a reason for doing it. And you have to have something that's measurable. You can't just get, I want to lose fat. How much fat? How much body weight do you want to lose? It's got to be measurable, okay? So that's really important. You got to have goals. That's me, 4th of July, having a little fun. Got to have some fun. All right, so expectations. I have expectations for myself. And I want to have those same expectations for my clients and my athletes. It's very, very important. Um, that it's not just about training, guys. It's about lifestyle. You're doing so much more for these people than having them lose fat and get stronger. You're building their character, you're enhancing their lives in, in, in many different ways you don't even realize. So I have about 10 expectations, so give your best effort. Really, really important that you go 100%. So if I'm training, I gotta be 100% focused. If you guys are at the seminar, you're 100% focused on the speaker, taking notes and learning. If you're, again, if you're given half, half effort, you're gonna get half results. Treat others with respect. I may not agree with everything that certain uh, fitness professionals do or agree with everything that other people do, but I always want to treat people with respect. No matter how much better you think you are someone or how much worse, we're all human and it's really important to treat others uh, how you want to be treated. It sounds like really, really basic stuff, but um, that's why I don't get into fights on the internet. That's why I don't call people out or like message boards and stuff like that. I don't respond to stupid negative comments. You always treat people how you want to be treated, okay? It's super important, it sounds basic, but that's just one of my, my rules to live by. And uh, I really believe that you get you get back what you, what you give out, so. Um, not to get all spiritual and stuff, but you know, I really believe in karma, so if you're a good person, you're gonna be attracted to other good people as well. Ask for help and give out help. Like, coaching isn't my blood, it's my passion, so, like I said, you know, talking before, and, uh, I was, I was hanging out in the fall. At my last meet, uh, I didn't hit depth, but on my second attempt, I fell forward, I fell a lot backwards at 880. Almost died, it was bad. And then I took it again. Got tighter, set my feet better. I stood up with it. Same weight, more attention to detail. Wasn't the strength, it was just that my form was, was on. Um, so those little details matter. Don't sweat the small stuff, but when you're coaching someone and you see their back rounding, let them know. Say something positive, correct the mistake, finish off with something positive. If, as a coach, you gotta have, you gotta hold yourself to a standard, you gotta hold yourself, everyone to a standard. So that, have those attention to little details, especially when the weight gets heavy, it could be the difference between smoking the weight and getting injured. So it's really, really important that you pay attention to detail. Being prepared, so I have a weakness with my deadlift lockout, so I'm doing some block pulls there, you can't see. Um, so it's all about preparation, so I want to ask you guys a question. I want you guys to raise your hand if you'd be afraid to fight the first grader. That's weird. <laughs> okay, uh, I just want a brave volunteer. Uh, why, would, why are you not afraid? Anybody? Good timings. Anything else? You just know you're not going to lose. You know you're, you know you're going to win. That's good answer there. You heard that one before? Or no? no, I didn't. That's, really that's, my, that's, that's what I was thinking. Like, I know I'd be this awesome. ass. <laughs> you know you're going to win. That's crazy, right? It's really a different, you have a different mindset when you know the outcome. So, sometimes we get nervous. I, I got really nervous. This is like a big speaking engagement for me. 
but I'm prepared. I did my PowerPoint. I went over my notes. I happen to know my story pretty well, so I didn't really have to study too much. I hope so. I hope I know about my life. So you're prepared. So if you study for a test for months and you've done all practice exams, you've done all your quizzes, you shouldn't be nervous going into a test. If you do a powerlifting meet and you, your training cycle goes well, you shouldn't be nervous going into the meet. But if you didn't study for that test, oh man. This isn't good. Well, I didn't train that well. It didn't go that well. I'm a little, then you should be nervous. So, preparation is key. If you are prepared, you should not be nervous. You can be anxious, that's okay. It's okay to have little butterflies, but you should be mentally so confident that you are going to succeed because you are prepared. So, preparation is key. Always make sure you're prepared. Live with integrity. It's my man, super D. can't really say. Uh, really, really nice guy. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. Um, Unbelievable. And for those of you guys who want to learn more, uh, the seminar, we closed it, but I can let you in. April 19th, we're doing a seminar with him. He's got the first man to total 3,000 pounds of power thing. He still has an all time world record. He's pretty strong. You know, squatted like 1265, bench like 950, and deadlifted like 828, I think, since So, didn't do them all the same uh, day, but yeah. So, anyway, super neat. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. Another guy, Dan Green, he's got the all time world record at 220. Um, he's helping out, and the day after Royal Unity, he's a big competition. He's helping out others out. He's spotted, he's loaded, he's limited. So I think that if you tell someone you're going to do something, you've got to be a man or a woman of your word. You've got to be, you got to live with, that's what living with integrity is all about. If you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. I committed to this seminar. And that's why I'm here today. Someone else might have backed out. I made a commitment to Justin and everyone else, so that's why I'm here. So it's really important that, and yes, there's going to be times you mess up, like you said, own up for it, but if you say you're going to do something, do it. Don't talk smack. Talking doesn't get you stronger. You just got to do it, man. You just got to get it done. And then you got to live the code. So these are all my expectations. You need expectations for yourself. You got to live it every single day. You don't have to go some, some days. And there's going to be days when you mess up, but you just go and you correct it. You don't want to. Every single day. This is on my, so all through all those expectations, I have some values for myself. This is on my lock screen on my phone. So every time I check the time, I see my values. I make sure that I'm not slipping up throughout the day. I see that every single day. So going back to goals. You can do the same thing with your goals, same thing with anything. I put my goals, like I want to total 2,000 pounds my next meet. So I have that written down on my uh, bedroom, my wall, on a piece of paper. So I see that every time I walk in my room. So you, you, these are little anchors for yourself. So you can use your lock screen on your phone. You can put a piece of paper on the refrigerator, your dieting, whatever it is. Just have something as an anchor that represents what you want to do that really grounds you like an anchor and brings you back to whatever your goal is, whatever your values are. So it's a constant reminder of how you want to live your life. And that will help you be more successful. Progress, not perfection. This does not happen overnight, guys. So there's me on the right side. That's me at 198 pounds. Uh, skinny dude. In my Kurt Angle wrestling singlet. That was very fashionable. Um, and I pulled 465 pounds that day. I squatted 375. I missed 415 twice, so I was, a, I was really annoyed. Got a little forward. And then I benched a massive 225 pounds. I learned really quick that you need to pause the power of the competition so my max was a little bit lower than I expected. It's crazy when you don't bounce the weight with that. So, in my last competition, uh, we'll use my last competition as an example. My squat didn't count, but whatever, I stood up with the weight. So I went from a 375 squat, and my best squat I've ever stood up with is 880 pounds. Pretty good, pretty good increase. My first bench pressing competition was 225 pounds. My last meet, I benched 575 pounds. And my deadlift went from 465 to 640 pounds. That happened in about eight years, let's see, 17, 
um, about almost eight, nine years of competing. Progress. Uh, in this competition, you know, I could be upset that I missed my squat, I didn't hit the toll I wanted, or I could focus on the positive, I could focus on my progress. You have your whole life to figure it out and be successful, guys. If you mess up and you fail, it's okay, just get back up. So you have to take time to reflect and see where you started. Because you'd be surprised, but you've got to look at how much you've grown. It's really, really important. Um, don't beat yourself up so much if you, if you miss your goals. You can reevaluate them and do better next time. Okay? So you got to focus on the progress, guys. If I was like, man, I only benched 225, you got your whole life to get better, whole life to get stronger. So don't just focus on the perfection, focus on where you're going and, and all the progress you made. There's me look at. Internalize. Breathe, take it in. So, why do you need goals? Why do you need a coach? This is how I do goals, guys. I'll leave you with this. Training or having uh, something you want to accomplish without a goal is like driving in your car without a destination. It's kind of weird. And I was actually speaking to a high school class the other day. They're like, yeah, well, we do that. I'm like, well, after you learn to drive a little bit, you want to drive a little bit. When you get in your car, you know where you're going. Okay. You need to have a destination before you start driving. So if you start training without a goal, you're just, you're, you're in a, you know, it's like uh, jamming around a uh, square peg into a round hole. It's never going to fit. It's never going to work. You need to know where you're going. Now, you may want to know, you may want to go somewhere, but you may not know how to get there. You may not have directions. Your directions is your program. Directions may not be enough. I may not know how to read directions. I'm bad with directions. The program may not be enough. The directions may not be enough, which is why I you now for me on Marvel directions. What do you guys use? GPS team. I would not be able to get you without a horrible directions. So GPS is like your coach. And what's great about having a coach is not only does it know the directions, not only does your coach know how to get there, but if you go off course, what does a GPS do? It recalculates. A good coach will modify the program and modify what you're doing based on how you're feeling, based on what hardships you have, based on you didn't get enough sleep or you missed this weight or whatever it is. So your coach will always guide you to where you want to be no matter what happens, if they're good. You can't have a crap, you gotta get a good GPS, you can't decide a crap. Well, it's so many things. So you need a good coach. So, if I leave you with nothing else, guys, I want you to look at your goal, and I want you to write down some action steps. You can, you can write it down right now. How are you going to get to where you want to be? Okay. Um, so whatever your goal is, write down how you're going to get there. And if you don't know how to get there, one of your action steps should be to contact somebody to get you there. So you got a lot of great coaches in this room. Today my goal is related to nutrition. You got a pretty good nutrition guy here, maybe you could contact for help. You look your shoulders messed up, hips messed up. You can go see Tony, if you want to go over to the yard, I'm not going to fix your shoulder over to the yard, I'm going to now. Uh, <laughs> if you want to get really strong, you're <laughs> Do you want to learn how to write a book? No? Okay, don't, don't, don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to like learn how to frame emails really efficiently and just be awesome and kind of thing. Uh, you just got to find those people. So. Yeah.